Um, today we're going to talk about multiplying polynomials. Yesterday we did add and subtract. Today we're going to do multiply. We do a little bit with divide, but not a lot. So we're just going to focus right now uh, with the way that um, with the way that our schedules work in next week because Monday is an A day and then B is a, a not B. Monday is an A day and then Tuesday is a work day and then Wednesday is an A day. So you guys don't have that Wednesday. Um, that you don't have the remote day next week. We're actually going to review and test on Monday, okay? And it's just on these two things. So adding and subtracting, and then you're going to do multiply. And multiply is really super easy. Um, I'm going to show you two ways. You know how to distribute. You should know how to distribute, but I'm also going to show you the box method. It keeps it a little more organized. So it's kind of up to you whichever one you want to use, and I don't care. So if you're comfortable with uh, distribute, do that. And then if you're comfortable with box, do that. All right, so the first one... They're absolutely distribute. That's what you've seen before. So I'm just going to remind you how to do those. So we're on multiplying polynomial notes. So you did adding and subtracting a show. So you have to flip through those sets of notes. Sorry. And then all you do is multiply your numbers. So three times five is 15. And then together they have two M. So you write it as M squared. Then you do the next one, three times positive seven is positive 21. And there's one M between them. That's it. Okay. Again, don't make it harder than what it is. Multiplying poly polynomials. Get it. Sorry. Everybody else okay? I'll wait. So again, for these, I always distribute when you get start getting like two sets of parentheses is when I use box methods. So we're going to do the first couple and then I'll move on to the ones that do that. We're going to distribute again. Multiply your numbers. Three times two is six. And you had one V between them. So you're just going to write one V. Then three times one is a positive three. So we're going to write plus three. That's it. So what is number three going to be when I distribute? Eight P and then what? There's just one P, right? So there should be no square, no cube, no nothing like that. So just one P. What is four times negative one? So we write negative four or minus four. Perfect. Perfect. Number four. 8n to the second or 8n squared. Perfect, because there are two of them between both of them. 8 times negative 6. Negative 48, and they have 1n between them. That's it. So 5 and 6 are the same exact thing. They just have more numbers in the sets of parentheses that you have to distribute to. It's the same exact thing. So you just have to distribute to three terms. Okay. What's six times eight? How many V's? Look at it one more time. Three. There's one with the six and two with the eight. So that makes three. Six times two. How many V's between them? Two. Six times negative three. And one V between them. That's it. Do the next one, distribute that four. Four times five, how many P's? Two. Four times two, how many P's? And then four times five. All right, any questions? All right, so I'm going to show you distribution first on the next ones. Notice it's two sets of parentheses. It's not just one number outside, it's two. So I'm going to show you distribution first, and then after I show you distribution, I'm going to show you the box. I like the box method better. It takes up more room. That's the only difference, but it keeps everything organized, okay? So in the right, I mean, in the left-hand column, I'm going to show you distribution. In the right-hand column, I'll show you all box, okay? So you get both, okay? So in the first one, to distribute... You may have learned it as FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. So if you've done that before, that's great. 
Again, it's not my favorite, it's whatever, I don't care. So what you're actually doing is you're gonna distribute this first number to all of the second set of parentheses, just like you did in the top. So what's 5R times 7R? What's five times seven? How many R's between them? So 35 R squared. Then you're gonna do five times negative four. How many R's between them? Just one. And then you're gonna do the same thing, but you're gonna do it with this negative five right here. So distribute it to both as well. Negative five times seven R. How many R's? Just one, yeah, between the five and seven R. And then negative five times negative four. Positive 20. The last thing that you're gonna do is add your like terms. So if you look in the middle, you have some like terms. So the 35 R squared does not change. Negative 20 minus 35 turns into negative 55. And what made them alike was the R. And then plus 20, that's it. Again, on the next one, I'm gonna show you box method. And it's a little bit easier. Have you guys, um, are any of you in biology? No? All right, when you get to biology, you're gonna do this too. So hopefully when you learn it with me and you go to biology, it'll be easier for you to learn. It's called a Punnett square. If you've ever looked at them, if you haven't, it's not a big deal. But when you get to biology and they start talking about Punnett squares, you can be like, hey, I did that math one, okay? So this is what you do. You make a box and we have one, two terms, one, two terms. So we're gonna make a two by two box. This'll grow when we get to the next page and you'll understand more. So right now it's two by two. Doesn't matter if you put it on the top or the side or what order you put them in. The first set of parentheses needs to either go on the top or the side. The first set is four X and a positive three. So I always start on the top. The next set of parentheses is 8x and a negative 7. Then you're going to look and see if I draw these over. Okay. So 8x goes through these boxes. Negative 7 goes through these boxes. 4x goes through these and three goes through these. So what you're actually doing when you work this out, grab a different color so you guys can see it. And you can write this in the box if you want to. I would do it right now, but when you get to your homework, you don't have to. What two things meet in this box? Don't forget your number, I mean your variables, 4x times 8x. What is 4x times 8x? 32, how many X's between them? X squared. Everybody see that? All right. In this box, the 8X and the 3 meet. So 8X and 3. What does that give you? 24 what? X. This bottom box, negative 7. And 4x meet. What is negative 7 times 4x? Perfect. And in the last box, negative 7 times 3, which is negative 21. Here's the reason I like the box. Then you look at your diagonals. And your diagonals are going to be like terms. And you just add those up. So what's in your first diagonal? 32x squared. That's the first part of your answer. Again, we're adding these. See this plus mark right here in the middle? Does everybody see that? What is negative 28 plus 24? You can use your calculator. Negative 28 plus 24. Negative four, sorry, I didn't hear you. Negative four X, keep that same term. And then what's in the last diagonal? That's your answer. Good. Some of this stuff you should have done last year. 
just like you guys doing linear regression or whatever on your calculator. That's good. We just reiterate it. Yeah. I like the box because it keeps it more organized, especially when you get to the next ones where it's trinomial times trinomial and you've got 50 million terms you're looking at. So it makes it a lot more organized and you don't have to search for the like terms. Like yesterday, you guys had to look for all the like terms, right? The box makes it in the same diagonal. So that's why I like the box better. Okay. You can do either or, it doesn't matter. All right, on this one, we're going to do distributing again. I don't care which way you do it. If you like the other way, use the other way on your homework. I don't care. We're going to do X times X, which is not 2X, but X squared. Perfect. We're going to do X times negative 5, which is what? Negative 5X. Perfect. You're also going to do the 4. 4 times X. 4X. And then 4 times negative 5. <coughs> Excuse me, it's negative 20. Add your like terms. We get x squared minus 1x minus 20. That's it. Again, I would double distribute these. I wouldn't, I personally do not use a box on these, but on the trinomial times the trinomial, I do. So when we get to the other ones, I'll show you. All right, look at your next one. We're going to use the box for this one. It's a two by two, same as before. My 7p plus 8 is going to go on the top. That just means my 8 is going to be positive. My 7p and my positive 1 on the side. If you need to draw the little lines, you can do that to help you. It's whatever you want to do. What meets in the first box? Which is? Uh-uh. 49. And how many P's? P squared. Good. And the next box is 7P and 8. What does that give you? 56 and 1p. In the other box, 1 and 7p. 7 and 1p. And in the last box, 1 times 8, which is 8. Look at your diagonals. There will be like terms. What's in your first diagonal? 49p squared. 7 plus 56. 63p. And in the last box, eight. That's it, y'all. Any questions? Okay. Again, I don't care which method you use. All right, I'm going to move on to number 13. I bet she didn't put any trinomials, times trinomials. Nope. Okay, I'm going to skip 11 and 12, and I'm going to move to 13. If you're going to do this, you have to distribute to everything, okay? So if you're going to do distribution, this is the one that I do not like, okay? You can, I would rather do box on these. You have to distribute your 6x squared to both. So what is 6x squared times 2x? 6 times 2 is? How many x is? 3. 6x squared times negative 7. 6 times negative 7 is negative 42. How many x's? 2. Then you have to do the negative 2. Negative 2 times 2x. Negative 2 times 2. Negative 4. How many x's? 2 of them. Negative 2x times negative 7. Negative 2 times negative 7. Positive 14. How many x's? 1. And then the last thing I need to do is that negative 2. Negative 2 times 2x. Negative 2 times 2x. Negative 4 what? Uh-huh. Not to the second. There's just one between them. 
watch this. It's okay. It's okay. That's again where the box will help you. So I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. Negative two times negative seven is positive 14. Now we got to find all our like terms. We have an x cubed, but I don't have another one. So that's what I'm going to start with 12x cubed. I have negative 42 minus 4, which is negative 46x squared. I have 14x minus 4x, which is 10x. And then I have a 14 on the end. That is your final answer. So again, I just don't like the distribution on this. All right. So how do we do box? This time we have three terms times two terms. So we have to make a three by two box. It doesn't matter if it's a tall box or a wide box. I'm gonna do mine like this just to fit it on the paper where I have two here and three here. It doesn't matter, you could lay it on the side. That Y'all, that don't matter at all. It's all gonna come out the same way. So my three terms have to go on the three downside. Everybody got that? So whatever you're, you've got has to match. So n squared is gonna go right here, seven n and negative eight. On the top, eight n and a negative two. Again, if you need the lines, you can put them in. What meets in the first box? 8n and n squared. What does that give you? Uh -huh. 8n to the third or 8n cubed. In the next box, negative 2 and n squared. What does that give you? You just push them together. What do you get? Negative 2n squared. Perfect. The next box is 7n and 8n. 7 times 8 is how many n's? Second. Good. You can count them inside that box. The next one is 7n times negative 2. Negative 14, and there's only one n in this box. The next one is negative 8 and 8n. And make sure you put your one in in there. And then the last box is negative 8 times negative 2, which is 16. And if you guys look, you can't really mess it up. If you're getting the numbers, you can't really mess up the letters because your diagonals are going to tell you which ones are like terms. So the first one is 8 in cubed. What is 56 plus negative 2? 54 in squared. Negative 64 minus 14. Seventy-eight. They're both negative. Negative 64 plus negative 14. And then the last box is 16. That's it. Again, I don't care which way but I like the box because it organizes it. It's also easier to see what you multiply and you don't leave out any, like you would know you didn't multiply them because you would leave an empty box. On this, you don't know whether you did or not multiply them. So just be careful. All right, so I'm gonna do the box again, but I'm gonna do it on 15 and I'm gonna make it a sideways box so you guys can see it like that. There's your two by three. My three B squared, eight B and negative three go on top. My three B and eight go on the side. If you need a lines or whatever, you can do that. What am I gonna have in the first box? 9b to the third. In the next box, 3b times 8b. 
8 times 3 is 24, and there's two Bs. Next box, 3B times negative 3. 3 times negative 3. And then there's 1B between the two of them. Next box, 8 times 3. And there's a B squared. 8 times 8. 64, and there's a B between them. And if you guys look, it's three Bs, two Bs, one B. Two B, one B, this one's not gonna have any. Eight times negative three is negative 24. Your diagonal should match. And we get nine B cubed. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, 24 plus 24. Forty-eight B squared, sixty-four minus nine. If you need your calculator, guys, get your calculator out and do it. Sixty-four minus nine, fifty-five, and then our last number is negative twenty-four. That's your answer. That's all you do. Move down to number nineteen. Again, it's a two by three. There's two terms here, three terms here. Your two terms are X and a positive four. Your three terms are three X squared, a negative four X and a negative six. What goes in the first box? We're multiplying x and 3x squared. 3x cubed. In the next box, we're multiplying x and negative 4x. We're multiplying x and negative six. Perfect. We're multiplying four and three X squared. We're multiplying four and negative four X. And in the last box, four and negative six. Your diagonal should be like terms, and they are. Your first diagonal is 3x cubed. 12 plus negative 4. 8. Keep your like term, x squared. Negative 16 minus 6. Negative 22x. And then your last number is negative 24. You guys okay? We're gonna do it one more time. One more time. All right, number 20. Your two term is two B and a negative one. Your three term is B squared 4B and minus 3. In the first box, you have 2B times B squared. What's that give you? 2 and 3Bs or B cubed. In the next box, 2B times 4B. 8B squared, perfect. In the next box, 2B times negative three is, in the next box, negative one times B squared. And you can put the negative one or just negative B squared. I don't care which one you do, sorry. 
Either or is fine, negative one or just one. Um, negative one times four B, negative four B. And the very last box is negative one times negative three, which is positive three. Check your diagonals, they should be like terms. Your first diagonal is 2B cubed. Negative one plus eight, seven B squared. Negative four plus negative six, negative 10 B. And your last box is a three. Y'all, that's it, okay. Your homework is the same way. Um, make sure that you're, just watch. Uh, again, I would suggest the box, but if you don't, that's okay. If you get stuck, let me know. Everybody else on Zoom, I'm going to stop sharing, stop recording.